Hi, I'm Amning Mendoza from Novaliches High School. I will be your teacher facilitator for today's lesson. Our lesson for today is Introduction to Computer System. For our learning competency, Plan and prepare for installation. Types and classification of computers, Electronic data processing, and components of electronic data processing. At the end of the lesson, the learner should be able to Number 1. Describe the electronic data processing or EDP. Number 2. Classify computer according to its type. And number 3. Recognize the components of computer system and its peripheral devices. Computers differ in size, capability, and function. There are computers used to process and transfer bulk information, and some are used for simple tasks. In this lesson, you will be introduced to the basic concepts of computer systems, specifically to the following topics. Electronic data processing and classification and types of computers. Electronic Data Processing or EDP What you input into a computer is called data and then it will be transformed into useful information. The process that makes data into its useful form is called Electronic Data Processing or EDP. The Electronic Data Processing cycle consists of the following Input Process, storage, then output. Just imagine every time you create or make a project of yours using Microsoft Word or any application in the computer when you input the data, the computer, particularly the CPU, will process what you inputted, then you are going to save it in a storage like my documents or anywhere you want to save it. Then, if you want to see or have the output of what you did, you're going to print it. Input It refers to all activities associated with recording data and making it available for processing. It presents the process of transforming data into a form that a computer understands. Processing after the data is recorded and converted into an appropriate form, it must be processed. Processing includes different arithmetic and logical operations such as classifying, sorting, summarizing, comparing, and other manipulation techniques that convert data into information. Output Data processing converts data into information that will be transmitted to the users of information. The result of the process is called the output. Storage The storage device contains the process data for future use. A storage device is a hardware component of a computer that permanently stores data. Components of Electronic Data Processing or EDP Hardware Hardware is the physical aspect of computers that you can actually touch. It includes not only the physical computer but also the cables, connectors, power supply unit, and peripheral devices such as the keyboard, mouse, audio speakers, and printers. Software this is the tangible program now known as software. Peopleware This refers to the developers and users of the computer system, hardware, and software. It only means when you say hardware, it is anything that you can touch and see with your eyes. While the software is you can only see it, but you cannot touch it. The people is anyone who uses a computer, either for work, studies, and for leisure. 
What is a computer? Computers are machines that perform a specific task or calculations depending on the set of instructions or programs. Computer is a programmable machine that can store, retrieve, and process data. Different types of computers Analog computers are used to process analog data or any form of data that is continuous and not separate or discrete. These computers are used to measure and calculate analog quantities in scientific and specialized engineering applications. Analog computers do not require storage memory because they perform the desired task in a single operation. It can perform several mathematical operations simultaneously. It uses continuous variables for mathematical operations and utilizes mechanical or electrical energy. Examples are speedometer and thermometer. Digital computers. They use digital circuits and are designed to operate on two states, namely bits, zeros, and ones. They are analogous to states on and off. Data on these computers is represented as a series of zeros and ones. Digital computers are suitable for complex computation and have higher processing speeds. They are programmable. A digital computer can be used to process numeric as well as non-numeric data. It can perform arithmetic operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, and also logical operations. Most of the computers available today are digital computers. The most common examples of digital computers are accounting machines and calculators. Now, what is the difference between an analog and digital computer? The results of digital computers are more accurate than the results of analog computers. Analog computers are faster than digital. Analog computers lack memory whereas digital computers stores information. We can say that digital computers count and analog computers measures. Hybrid computers These computers are a combination of analog and digital computers with the best features of each type. They have the speed of analog computers as well as the accuracy and speed of digital computers. These computers are used in applications that process both continuous and discrete data. In this type of computers, the digital segments perform process control by conversion of analog signals to digital ones. Classification of computers Mainframe computers Large organizations use mainframes for highly critical applications such as bulk data processing and ERP. Most of the mainframe computers have the capacities to host multiple operating systems and operate as a number of virtual machines and can substitute for several small servers. Mini computers In terms of size and processing capacity, mini computers lie in between mainframes and microcomputers. Mini computers are also called mid-range systems or workstations. The term began to be popularly used in the 1960s to refer to relatively smaller third-generation computers. Servers They are computers designed to provide services to client machines in a computer network. They have larger storage capacities and powerful processors. Running on them are programs that serve client requests and allocate resources like memory and time to client machines. Usually, they are very large in size as they have large processors 
and many hard drives. They are designed to be fail-safe and resistant to crash. Supercomputers The highly calculation, intensive tasks can be effectively performed by means of supercomputers. Quantum physics, mechanics, weather forecasting, molecular theory are best studied by means of supercomputers. Their ability of parallel processing and their well-designed memory hierarchy give the supercomputers large transaction processing power. Microcomputers A computer with a microprocessor and its central processing unit, it is known as a microcomputer. They do not occupy space as much as mainframes do. When supplemented with a keyboard and a mouse, microcomputers can be called personal computers. A monitor, a keyboard, and other similar input-output devices, computer memory in the form of RAM, and a power supply unit can package in a microcomputer. These computers can fit on desks or tables and prove to be the best choice for single-user tasks. We have two classifications of microcomputers. The first one is the personal computers or what we call the desktop computers. They have become widely popular with people of all lifestyles because they are powerful, affordable, and easy to use. Personal computers are of various sizes and design. A desktop is intended to be used on a single location. The spare parts of a desktop computer are readily available at relatively lower costs. Power consumption is not as critical as that in laptops. Desktops are widely popular for daily use in the workplace and households. A personal computer or desktop computer has three major components. The monitor, the keyboard, and the system unit or what you commonly called as the CPU, which is not right. Why? Because a CPU is one of the important components of the system unit. So when you say system unit, it is the whole box wherein you connect all the other parts of a computer system and other peripherals. The other classification of microcomputers is the portable computers. It includes laptops or notebooks, sub-notebook, tablet computers, and personal digital assistants. They are small enough to move easily from one place to another and they can operate on batteries. They are popular with people who travel and need computing power on the go. These are the kind of computers that you can bring anywhere, anytime, as long as it is fully charged. You can work while in a vehicle, in a park, or anywhere you are comfortable to work with. Examples of portable computers Laptops Similar in operation to desktops, laptop computers are miniaturized and optimized for mobile use. Laptops run on a single battery or an external adapter that charges the computer batteries. Netbooks They fall in the category of laptops but are inexpensive and relatively smaller in size. They had a smaller feature set and lesser capacities in comparison to regular laptops at the time they came into the market. Now, what is the difference between the laptop and netbooks? The laptop is bigger in size than netbooks. In terms of storage capacity, the laptop usually has larger capacity than netbooks. The netbook is more handy because you can put in a smaller bag because its size is just like a notebook, unlike the laptop, which you will need a backpack or any bag that it will fit. Personal Digital Assistance or PDAs 
It is a handheld computer and popularly known as a palm top. It has a touch screen and a memory card for storage of data. PDAs can also be used as portable audio players, web browsers, and smartphones. Most of them can access the internet by means of Bluetooth or Wi-Fi connection. Tablet Computers Tablets are mobile computers that are very handy to use. They use the touchscreen technology. Tablets come with an on-screen keyboard or use a stylus or a digital pen. Apple's iPad redefined the class of tablet computers. We have two kinds of tablets nowadays. The tablets with Android operating system which is manufactured by different manufacturers like Samsung, Huawei, Cherry Mobile, and others. And the other one is the tablet with an iOS operating system which is manufactured by Apple company which is commonly known as iPad. Wearable Computers A record-setting step in the evolution of computers was the creation of wearable computers. These computers can be worn on the body and are often used in the study of behavior modeling and human health. Military and health professionals have incorporated wearable computers into their daily routine as a part of such studies. When the user's hands and sensory organs are engaged in other activities, Wearable computers are of great help in tracking human actions. Wearable computers do not have to be turned on and off and remain in operation without user intervention. We have different examples of wearable computers. As of this moment, the most common is the Apple Watch or Smartwatch in which it serves as a watch and at the same time you can text and surf the internet. Another example of wearable computers are the fitness trackers that monitors steps taken, heart rate, calories burned, and a range of other fitness metrics. Thank you for watching and happy learning! Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for your video lessons in TLE. Just search for Mamning Mendoza. Thank you!